Ladies and gentlemen, we have another impressions video for you all. Thank you, Xseed, for the review code. Today, we are looking at Sakuna of Rice and Ruin. A, um, action RPG slash simulation game <laughs> developed by uh, Edelweiss. I think that's how you pronounce that. And uh, brought to the U.S. by Xseed and Europe by Marvelous, I think. But in any case, uh, this is a game w in which you play as the daughter of a warrior goddess and a harvest goddess. Who, as you would expect, because the Japanese love their irony, is extremely lazy. Um, <laughs> doesn't like fighting, doesn't like working <laughs> at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, the setup for this game is um, a small group of humans who are, on their, who are on the run from slavers of some kind bumble their way into the, into the lofty realm where uh, the many, many, many gods and deities of this totally not Shinto religion um, live and dwell. What I want to know is how do you wind up how do you wind up stumbling onto Mount Olympus? But whatever. <laughs> well, apparently the bridge appears and disappears at irregular, unpredictable intervals, and it just happened to be there while they were on their way. Um, <laughs> so, what basically hijinks ensue while the humans are there, and Sakuna here winds up uh, taking the blame for the stuff that the humans. Um, bust up and blow up and destroy on their way through the lofty realm this might Oops. this might have just been like the supreme goddess's excuse to get sakuna off her ass though <laughs> because, probably because um she gets she gets assigned the task of uh of journeying to this island where her parents used to used to live and taking control of it for the before the leap goddess whatever her name was i'm not even going to try to pronounce it basically it's this island full of demons that for some reason the gods have not been able to bring under their heel for so for a while so sakuna has to explore this island uh create for herself a foothold and with the help of the of the humans who wandered into the lofty realm because the bridge went and disappeared on them so they can't just send them out uh <laughs> the uh with the help of those humans she has to uh just you know live and survive long enough that well she can do that yeah basically if you it I believe is it Act Razor on the Genesis that's part uh, platformer and part uh, God game. I I believe never actually played Act Razor. I have no idea. I know there's. I I think it's Act Razor, but there is a Genesis game that's like one half of a platformer combat game, and the other half is basically playing The Sims. It's kind of like that, as far as gameplay goes. I'll have to take your word for it. The uh, uh, oddly, the closest comparison I can make with games that I have played is um, Gust's At The Air games. Um, I'm deliberately mispronouncing that word because that's how they pronounce it whenever a character says the word within their games. But, you know, the, 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 the games where you play as an alchemist gathering ingredients and creating items in your magic cauldron in between... Um, running around gathering things in RPG sections those games I love those games and this and this series seems to have pretty much the same kind of gameplay loop you have areas like this one that we're looking at now where you fight monsters gather materials and ingredients for food items and um, we have this 2D side-scrolling Metroidvania-like combat most of the areas like this are just ones are, are just one are just one sizable area where you go fight some monsters, gather some ingredients, and uh, the real time clock runs down, and hopefully you get your stuff done before the sun sets because the monsters become a lot more powerful at night, as you would expect. What a, what a horrible night to have a curse. Um, I recommend you not try fighting monsters at night when the game just starts because um, they'll all take one damage from every attack you do, and 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 they'll do a bunch of damage to you, and it's miserable. Don't go out at night. It's not safe, and until you level up a bit, it's not fun. That said, you're not going to level up just by fighting monsters in this game. 
Because, as I mentioned, Sakuna here is the daughter of a harvest goddess, and that means a significant part of her power comes from the harvest. In And, well, since she's been lazy all her life, she doesn't have much of it. <laughs> so you gotta grow just a crap ton of rice. That is the farming element of this game, is growing rice. And every year, every in-game year, which was which is about 12, 12 in-game days, because... Um, the seasons are like... Wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey. <laughs> the seasons are like three days long. Don't ask me. Um, the, once you... We're, sk we're skipping on the anime filler. Yeah, every year when you... When, when you... Um, when you grow your rice harvest, you you gain power from that. And... Level up, you got more stats. Then you can start damaging the enemies at night. And... That was one of those things I was most intrigued by because... I am not a fan of farm slash simulation games like at all. That's one of the, th it's like whenever anyone says like, oh, you need to try Harvest Moon or more recently uh, Stardew Valley. And it's like, okay, I'm not doubting that those games are good, but I don't, I can't get into the gameplay loop of you grew a bunch of crops. So you sold all your crops to get more money. What do you do with the money to buy more land so you can grow more crops? <laughs> well, it, I would compare those kind of games more to Animal Crossing where the the overall goal is more to um, establish the life that you want your character to have there. Yeah, but... I'm just uh, I'm saying as a game as a gameplay mechanic loop, it's not super interesting to me. So I need a little bit more to go on, and that and that's why what this game caught my eye because it's like I like the idea of well, you know earning stats and working you know a life of some kind to help yourself out gameplay wise but i need an actual game for that to matter with <laughs> yeah um i wouldn't compare this to the stardew valleys and harvest moons oh no i'm, world, I'm not though. saying it's i'm not saying it's that i'm just saying that's like that's the reason i can't get into i'm i'm just segueing into sims. into a point i was into a point i was going to make anyway um this gotcha. game this game doesn't really have the same kind of gameplay that those games do uh, when it's it, it, in terms of s the simulation elements, it's actually a, a fair bit more true to life. Well, apart from the fact that every season is three days long, <laughs> you're you, you have one harvest per year, um, and your only crop is rice. In that sense, it's kind of leaning into the whole Japanese history feeling. Of the thing, rice is life. Yes, and we'll see how the right how well we'll see part of how the rice farming works because if I included the whole process in here, it would take the, the, the well the the video would be twice as long. In any case, yeah, I just beat a boss fight. Yippee! The combat is pretty fun. The actual levels you go through while fighting monsters are very simple. Some of them are just boss arenas some of them are actually just one screen big and are just there to have a harvest spot that you can go to every day but uh most of them are um one semi medium large area that you can run around in and fight monsters and the monsters will respawn every day this one that i showed off was two areas big because it's a bit of because it's a i guess you could call it a major level of the game the first major level in the game as of this recording the only major level that i have encountered because i'm not very far in um it did have a boss fight in it and we got ourselves a little item upgrade thing for that but you know i've only fought two bosses the second boss was um, a really big ass sort of demon elk that I um, couldn't beat at first, so I actually had to wait until I until I did another harvest. But just getting that one harvest in powered Sakuna up to the to, to the point where a boss that was previously impossible for me to stand against suddenly became actually rather easy and. Um, I was I was a little dazzled by how much power I gained from just one, not even very good rice harvest. <laughs> so um, it really does make a difference. It's like a whole a whole two play sessions worth of level up grinding all at once. <laughs> In any case, um, so. That's a, that's all the combat that I'm going to show off in this in this part. The combat I think is really fun. You have that divine raiment grappling hook move with Sakuna's 
sash, I guess, that she uses to swing herself and her enemies around. And there are a bunch of moves that you can unlock for that, too, like um, the ability to yank enemies towards you, or I think the ability to swing an enemy away or maybe into another enemy. I haven't gotten far enough to know how many moves there are, but there are at least four um, shortcut slots in the menu for those, and I only have two of them. So there's quite a bit that I haven't unlocked there. You also have a bunch of special moves for your melee weapons, which get a whole four shortcut buttons for themselves, too. And... Um, uh, another thing to note, I was just as a slight aside, since we're on a scene right now, I'm surprised at the amount of voice acting this game has. It's got voice acting for almost everything. Um, there are, which is which is rare for a very small game, development development wise. Mm, yeah, I would say so. Um, well, I wouldn't say rare for a small game in terms of development because I've played quite a few lower budget Japanese games, uh, mostly from Gust. I did not mention them arbitrarily. And they have a similar graphical feeling to this kind of game, but uh, they have a lot of voice acting. What's rare is for them to be dubbed. <laughs> Fortunately, True. this is one of those games that did get a dub, as you can probably hear. Um, that might be more from <laughs> Xseed than anything, but... Yeah, Xseed is really good about their localizations. Uh, so I'm I'm glad they got I'm glad they got their hands on this one and decided to give it the full dub treatment. I think they had the idea that a lot of people, myself included, have been thought about this game is that this could be like a sleeper hit of the holiday season between all the other major releases that I feel. It might be, yeah. Um, it's definitely it's definitely an addicting game in both aspects. The combat is fun. Uh, the gameplay loop that brings you to the combat is fairly simple, but I really do like the feel and flow of it. What's not quite so fun is trying to use the Divine Raiment to grapple around during platforming, because um, I don't feel... I, I feel like uh, Sukuna's jumping speed is a little too fast to precisely use the grappling hook on anything, and unlike in combat where the grappling hook seems to lock on just seems to have a soft lock on to enemies it um it doesn't do the same thing for walls so trying to precisely land a diagonal grappling hook shot at the top corner of a wall so that you can zip on up and climb that ledge tends to be a bit of a crapshoot a lot of the time that's the only really aggravating part of the game for me to be honest i am a bit crap at the combat now but i I can tell it's just me being a bit crap at the combat. Like, it feels like once I once I have a complete handle on how all the mechanics work, I wouldn't actually have any trouble keeping up with what the game throws at me. And it's it's actually really fun swinging around the enemies and pulling off clutch special attacks from the middle of a group using that you know, big fuck-off swing special attack that knocks enemies into other enemies from one side of a big group to send half that group flying into the other group to do a whole bunch of damage at once. That is really cathartic. And on the other side, there's this. Planting rice. So, <laughs> when you actually do plant the rice... The only difference between what you're seeing on screen right now and what you're doing in-game is that it's really, really hard to walk backward in a straight line when you're using an analog stick, apparently. Um, <laughs> it's, almost, it's almost like it's hard to do that in real life, too. I mean, the, the, the game also does something I'm really appreciative of, where most farming and life sims will just dump you with all the information at the start, because it's like, this is how you till the fields, this is how you do this, this is how you do that. Whereas, as a good part of the narrative growth, is that it doesn't tell you anything when you start. You're stuck in the field with Sakuda, and you kind of have to just guess what you're doing. Yeah, you get your first instructions on rice planting from uh, the samurai guy way over on the far right, the big dude. And he's so gung-ho about it, he thinks he's going to be good at something for once in his life. He's freaking terrible at farming. <laughs> So, Sakuna kind of has to take over. She, uh, originally, she plans to leave it to him so that she can just, in her own words, convalesce until she feels like getting to work. But, um, 
it doesn't it doesn't end up working out like that you do have the option to leave uh, each individual step of the farming process to someone else on your on your team but they'll always do worse at it than you so I don't recommend doing that until you're much later in the game and are all leveled up and don't have to worry about the quality of your rice because you're making so much so goddamn much of it um in any case this cutscene goes on for a long time which out of context might seem a little annoying but I actually found this cutscene really <laughs> I don't know wholesome <laughs> when I when I, when I encountered it because this is one of the later cutscenes that popped up during my recording just a scene that played out when I got back from a dungeon crawl and um it's one of those it may be annoying in video form without any context but all the home and farming stuff relies entirely on the characterization of your little group of misfits here <laughs> And it does an extremely good job of it. Yes. Yes, indeed it does. I love all of these people. Every single one of them, down to the baby off to the side who can't even talk. <laughs> this, uh, uh, these four, these, the, the, these five, rather, humans that, um, that accompany you on this odyssey of rice farming, dungeon crawling adventure, they're just so fun. I like them so much. From the little from the tough guy kid and the girl who's got a crush on him and uh, making him extremely uncomfortable most of the time. Uh to the f He's not old enough to like girls yet. <laughs> yeah, to the foreigner who talks about the totally not Christian religion of this world, to the samurai who's actually a bandit who is actually a terrible bandit because he's too good good natured to be a bandit um <laughs> to uh tama the little dog spirit there who's sort of sakuna's well-meaning servant who spends half of his time berating her for not being a very good goddess and the other half of his time getting on everyone else's case for not respecting her <laughs> i i love these characters so much and one of the best parts of this game is just, okay, the food items that you get in this game, from the rice that you farm to the ingredients that you find while you're out, which will spoil within a day or two if you don't use them, by the way. Um, whenever you sit down for dinner, every day you get to, you get to have team cook cook up a meal for everyone and yeah you get like a temporary stat buff from the meal and if you're as long as you're well fed you'll naturally recover health outside of battle which is necessary for getting the most out of your hunting expeditions every day every time you eat or almost every time you eat sometimes it won't happen there are so many conversations that these that these characters have at the dinner table, and they go on for quite a long time. They talk about everything. It's it's great. Like um, you might think going in that you're just gonna, you know, pick a meal and skip through the animation of them eating every day. There are so many conversations that you'll miss by doing that. Anyway, let's. Time to actually farm. Yeah, let's farm some rice. I skipped over the whole rice growing process because, well, it's the third day of summer. Um, late summer, early winter is usually the point where you're going to start actually... Early fall. Uh, early fall, yes. Why did I say winter? There is a winter, but you're not going to be doing any farming at all during the winter. Early fall is w when you're going to be harvesting all of your rice. But... The actual process of growing the rice starts in the, the early spring, and it takes a long time. You're going to have to individually plant every rice seed. You're going to have to watch the water levels day by day. And yes, when it rains, the water will go up on its own, and when it's not raining, it will go down on its own. So you constantly have to check. You have to scoop doo-doo out of the outhouse and dump it in the, uh, in the little fertilizer creation hole with some of the items that you harvested while you were out hunting. Although uh, <laughs> I believe later on in the game you have to, you can wrangle like ducks and stuff to do that for you in the troughs. Probably, but right now all I have is the outhouse. Or, as the baby very joyfully announces when the subject comes up, poop. So, yes, you create fertilizer over there. 
you use items to make the fertilizer more fertilizer-y. And um, basically, you, as far as that goes, you just check the uh, field every day and see how fertile the soil is. And if it needs a fertilizer top off, you do that. And other than that, watching the water levels every day, it's pretty much just a matter of... Mm, waiting for the r waiting for the rice to come in, making sure everything stays as it should be throughout the entire harvest, and then harvesting. And the more rice you have during a particular harvest, the more seeds you'll have to plant more rice. The cutscenes that we saw earlier, where they were singing rice farming songs, um, that was actually the scene that establishes that the other that the other members of your crew have established more rice fields for the for the group down at the base of the mountain and whatever you do with the main rice field up here by the house they're going to mimic down at the bottom of the field so after that happens you'll start to get more rice from them so that's definitely that's definitely helpful especially since there are so many food items that require rice well i imagine if they made you do every single field they would never end <laughs> Yeah, it it would it would be way too long. I mean, the rice field up here compared to a real rice field in the real world is freaking tiny. If they were going to make that realistic, this would quickly turn into Farming Simulator 2020 uh, Rice Farming Edition. So yep. <laughs> they have to make some concessions, but within that within that framework, it's uh, it's kind of impressive that they that they pulled off this. Uh, we're going to stick true to rice farming as far as the appearance of rice farming goes, as far as the general bullet points of the process go. Uh, and I understand why they did, because rice farming is itself as much a staple of Asian culture and history as rice is a staple of their diets. <laughs> so... You know, it's it's got a it's got a charming feeling to it in that sense. Although the rice just sort of disappeared from from foreign ladies' um, bowl there, like I mean, still a small <laughs> studio. You have, you have to make some graphical concessions here. I uh, I didn't notice that while I was playing. It's so much easier to notice little quirks like that when you're watching footage. Oh boy, we got a plus ten fullness for our jelly filled donuts. The last step is a little bit fiddly you have to dry the rice and that takes a certain number of hours assuming you're lucky enough not to have it rain on you while the rice is drying it is a very good idea to get your rice done and you know plucked from the ground before autumn begins because if you don't if you don't fully dry and store your rice before winter sets in you might just lose the whole goddamn harvest the game is not going to is not going to have mercy on you if that happens. <laughs> so, um, get it done. Don't 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 be too in character as Sakuna. Sakuna might be inclined to, to to be lazy and let that go, but you cannot be. You gotta eat. I also like this 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 pair of cutscenes where Mirthe, I think her name is Mirthe, Mirth, Mirth whatever her name is foreign lady she's um she wants to she wants to start a school for the kids because three out of the five humans here are quite young and she wants to have she wants to set up this school but the first time they're just not having it so she wrangles sakuna of all people here to give them a pep talk so that they'll accept the idea <laughs> this is this is it's kind of hypocritical though because because like Sakuna herself has absolutely no enthusiasm for the idea whatsoever because she's just too lazy and the only reason she gets ro roped into this is because she looks a lot younger than she is yeah she's not any bigger than the kids so mm -hmm. then she wants to flaunt how much smarter she is than the humans <laughs> yep <laughs> And she got it wrong. <laughs> it didn't go so. That didn't go so well for her. Uh, I love these characters so much. I wish I could show more of this game within a reasonable amount of time, but it's a very slow-paced game. This is a, it, in in a relaxing sense, I would say. I like okay. For example, 
I'm going to fade forward through these next two steps because when you're actually sitting down doing them, it takes a while. You got 10 full bundles of rice and this is the pace at which you're doing it. This is the threshing. All you have to do for the threshing is repeat this button combination over and over because that's how farm work be. It doesn't take halfway as long as real farm work would, but it does take quite a while in order to thresh the rice and then haul the rice completely, assuming you want your rice to come out as white rice rather than brown rice. And pro tip, do white rice in all of your early harvests because that's what gets you the biggest level ups. Once you've got more rice seedlings planted, you can probably go for brown or rice and, you know, save yourself some actual time because you'll be leveling up more because you'll be getting more rice. But... I don't know why... Oh, I think she's just going to keep saying that because I don't have very many seedlings, huh? But yeah. That and you're still early game, so it's going to be a while before you get the super good rice. Look at those gains. Immediately after this, I went off and just completely destroyed the boss that had stonewalled me in the forest area. But um, we're not going to see that in this video because I actually didn't want to spoil that boss. It's quite fun. I mean, half an hour preview of it is pretty good, all things considered, I think. <laughs> uh, looks like dinner is, is, ah, we've got some sushi going on. Nice. Yeah. Homemade sushi. That never goes wrong. It always goes wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, better than the gas station sushi. Yeah, probably. So... Sakuna of Rice and Ruin. I'm probably going to go back to this sometime fairly soon. Um, but not right now, I think, because you got other stuff to do. Yeah, I just got <laughs> the reason this video itself took so long to get out is because I happened to get a new job as soon as I as soon as I got the review codes for this game in Yakuza 7 and I only had time to do one of them at first so I started with Yakuza 7 because I was more excited for it. I'm kind of um, upset with myself for, for leaving this till, till second though because I wound up liking it a lot more than I expected to. And as I say this, I'm, I'm, I'm distracted by the way Sukuna keeps clipping her entire arm through her ramen bowl to get at her cup. It, uh, <laughs> they could have had her reach over, but they, but they didn't. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> yeah, little animation. It is what it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you you get used to this kind of thing with uh, with low to mid tier um, anime style games. But in any case, thank you all for watching. This has been. Um, a wholesome little dip into the world of anime rice farming. And I hope that we have uh, interested you in trying this game out, because it's definitely worth a look, I would say. I would wholeheartedly agree there. We will see you all the next time we manage to get a review code for something. Thank you, and have a good night. Later.